Does soda, energy drinks, and the like, the sugar-sweetened kind, raise your risk of dying from colorectal cancer? As I've been asked in the past, is that also the case for non-sugar-sweetened soda, like diet soda? The answer is yes to the first question, but with several layers of context and nuance, because the real answer may not affect some at all and be very important for others. I released an analysis a while back looking at the mechanistic argument for how soda, the sugar sweetened kind, causes colorectal cancer to be more aggressive and spread more. And while I did touch on the evidence in humans, there's much more to be said. So I pulled multiple large studies investigating this very topic, which amounted to over 300,000 people being studied to find out if soda raises our risk of cancer overall, if those with colorectal cancer are more likely to die, and if you recover from colorectal cancer, are you more likely to develop it again? These are three important distinguishing points because each question addresses different populations of people. So, in reverse order, when we want to know if colorectal cancer is more likely to lead to death or come back when we consume soda, we have to look at people who have colorectal cancer, as well as people who have had the cancer removed and are trying to keep it at bay. That's what we see here. When we track people over a median seven years after their cancer has been removed, and then we see how many people experience a return of their cancer, we can stratify based on the amount of sugar sweetened beverage intake. In doing so, along with controlling for many factors, so obvious influencing factors, there's 75% increased risk of cancer recurrence. That means, in simpler terms, Colorectal cancer is more likely to return when we consume sugar-sweetened beverages, soda being the dominant one. Now, when taking things a step further, when we look at people still dealing with present colorectal cancer, the study found no initial relationship between sweetened beverages, again, that's dominantly soda, and increased risk of colorectal cancer mortality. So, is it a risk of recurrence, but doesn't make the cancer worse after that point? Well, not quite. And here we may be touching on one of those nuances that I alluded to. In the mechanisms that we discussed in the previous analysis, I mentioned a more aggressive cancer from exposure to these sugars, so glucose and fructose. The same ones found in sugar-sweetened beverages, if that's sucrose-sweetened or high-fructose corn syrup-sweetened. Well, in this study that we're going over, the researchers point out that there's no relationship between these sweetened drinks and colorectal cancer mortality when looking at all the data. But when segmenting based on deaths in the first five years or after five years, there was a detected increase in the risk of death from colorectal cancer in the first five years. So what could this mean? Well, the researchers mention a critical biological window where a person could be recovering from a treatment or experiencing undetected metastases, so spreading of the cancer, which could be fueled by a greater intake in sugar beverages. Now, this would also play into the idea that this particular cancer, when exposed to sugar in this context, spreads more. So this could be a signal that sugar-sweetened beverages make colorectal cancer progress more quickly and more deadly. It could also be that some people have more localized cancer, so less severe cancer, or that only particular colorectal cancers are prone to supercharging their aggression, creating this time scale difference. The takeaway here being that colorectal cancer mortality risk is likely to be increased when consuming sugar-sweetened beverages, again, soda being the dominant, if a person has colorectal cancer. But what about most of you? Could there be an increased risk of colorectal cancer from consuming soda? Does it matter if it's sweetened or sugar-free? Well, when looking at studies including almost 200,000 participants, the answer to the first question might be no. No link was detected for sweetened beverages, but oddly enough, they did find a relationship with total sugar consumption. However, this study has some major limitations. For example, while the study ran for an average of 19 years, measurements were only taken once at the beginning of the study. So as the study progresses, the data is highly likely to become more and more outdated. 
The best we can do is to say that there's an association to baseline data collected nearly 20 years ago. Fortunately, there are better studies investigating the same issue, these studies, which use data collected from a mere 100,000 participants, but lasted much longer, 10 to 20 years longer, as well as tracked people's metrics like dietary intake changes and lifestyle changes and more every two to four years, which offer much more quality data. Interestingly, when we look at cancer mortality in this data set, we do see a stepwise relationship. The yellow line at the bottom indicates a neutral relationship and anything north of that indicates a harmful relationship. So greater cancer mortality. At most intakes, there's clearly increased risk. This is repeated in more specialized populations when using a similar data set as well, though this study focused on cancer occurrence, showing a 16% increased risk at the highest intakes. So not quite as straightforward considering this study looked at overall cancer mortality and the other two were focused on colorectal cancer. In addition, we don't know if the deaths happened in people with colorectal cancer since the study didn't control for that at the beginning. It only controlled for family history of cancer. Still, this other study looking at cancer occurrence did control for people who had endoscopy screening for fear of colon cancer, as well as a family history of colon cancer. And it still found a relationship in people who didn't have either. This all comes together to create a bit trickier takeaway. I'd cautiously suggest that there's at least a signal between soda, again, that's the primary sugar sweetened beverage included, and colorectal cancer occurrence risk. Though I would like to see more direct data. I'll explain more of that in just a bit. Now, we've been heavily focused on these sugar filled drinks, but many people use the alternative for soda pop. They use sugar-free options like those with artificial sweeteners or other non-nutritive sweeteners, essentially diet soda. So do we see the same relationship there? I'm going to make quick work of that in just a second, but if you're looking to learn about a bit about other types of cancer or if uh, fruit juices have the same warnings or if substituting for other drinks like milk, coffee, and others might change the risk, and more, then check out my full analysis. It's an extended video of the one that you're watching. It's ad-free, it comes with an article, uh, one paragraph summary of the most important takeaways, and that's consistent across all my analyses, multiple per week on average, that release for the Physionic Insiders, where the land of scientific wonder expands into a wonderland of mirth and high fives. That last part may or may not be true, but you do get access to all my work, plus a private podcast, live sessions, and more. The link to join the insiders is in the description. I hope to see you there. Diet soda across every single study, because most looked at it, does not show any relationship with colorectal cancer. That was like an episode of, uh, <laughs> of Maury. Uh, diet soda, you are not the father of this cancer. Okay, I would make that more complex, but that's really it. And it's not a surprise considering the mechanisms that were explained in my previous work. I'll link it for you if you're interested. The mechanisms solely revolved around glucose and fructose, neither of which are found in diet soda. Now, of course, there could be other mechanisms, but as it stands, we don't have any evidence that diet soda increases the risk of developing or dying from colorectal cancer. So in short, don't worry about diet soda in relation to colorectal or colon cancer. Now, two important things that you should know. One, almost all of these studies looked at body weight. You know, since drinking sugary drinks can promote weight gain and weight gain and especially obesity can cause cancer, these results were still present even when weight was accounted for. So no, it is not the obesity causing this relationship. There is a maintained association even when controlling for that major factor. Two, the dose makes the poison. I said this last time, but the amount of sweetened beverage matters a lot, in fact. Across the studies, a rough estimate where risk is consistently identified is around two sodas a day. Some studies showed it with a bit less, while others didn't, and some looked at a bit more. 
but they all hover around two 240 milliliter drinks. This also means that well, while not exactly a health treat, having a soda every now and again isn't going to suddenly churn up colorectal cancer. It's a consistent intake too. Okay, that was a lot. Maybe we should take a breath before we put all this together into some actionable takeaways and go over how to think about all this. <sighs> Everything considered, here's where we land. I think we have strong enough evidence, including the mechanistic data, that if you have colorectal cancer, consider avoiding sugar sweetened soda and possibly most sugar sweetened drinks. If you have had colorectal cancer and you want to give yourself the best chance of not allowing it to come back, do the same. Avoid the sodas. If you do not have colorectal cancer and are otherwise healthy, the certainty in the evidence diminishes. There are signals there that it's still a colorectal cancer risk, but it is not as certain as the previous scenarios. So maybe consider reducing consumption, but keep in mind that once in a while treats is probably pretty benign. More direct data is definitely needed. So if you drink diet, non-sugar soda, there is no identified colorectal cancer risk. So you're probably fine. If you'd like to know exactly how sugar accelerates colorectal cancer, actually gets into the cancer cells and understand what makes them supercharge their growth, then check out my initial analysis right here. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great sugar-free day. I'll speak with you soon.